All right, good morning. So I'm back out in the Blue Mountain Birch Cove Lakes wilderness area for yet an, an unplanned, no review, hike and explore, have a coffee and a chat type of video. And uh, yeah, I, <laughs> I'm out of breath a little bit. And the reason being is you can probably see I'm up and down on the hills here. And we're in a winter wonderland. Look at this, the snow. Well, we got dumped with about 30 centimeters a couple of days ago. I actually got out snowshoeing for the first time in two years. I was all excited about that. I think you will have seen that video by now. Uh, this is gonna be just a little bit different because I'm using not my phone. How about that? I'm using my regular camera, which presents issues that I wanna talk to you about in a few moments time. It is about minus three degrees Celsius. That's not cold, right? That's just below freezing. But East Coasters will understand this. It's 92% humidity out here today. So it's what we call a damp cold. I would sooner be minus 10 or minus 15 and 30% humidity anytime. You feel much warmer when it's like that. Not today. Today, it's like I can feel it penetrating in. And uh, anyway, that said, the only way to overcome that is to get moving. So if you're interested, follow along. So right now I'm walking along uh, one of the trails that goes into the Blue Mountain Birch Cove Lakes Wilderness. It's a, an area I use about half the time. Well, uh, this trail is probably the primary entry point, at least from where I come in. There are other entry points. And uh, I debated taking, I don't know if I said this already, I debated taking my snowshoes today. But you can see a number of people have done the same thing I have. They've already come in and a little rock climb. And they've beaten the trail down, so it would not have been good snowshoeing today. But I did put on my Catula Micro Spikes because under this can be ice. And it wouldn't take much to go down, twist a knee, and then I'd be looking for something to come get me. So the spikes go on. I can always take them off, but better to have them and not need them than to need them and wish you had put them on. Anyway. Uh, this is nice and flat right now. It's about to start dropping down a little bit further towards the lake as I go. So I won't be able to walk along with the camera in my hand for much further. It'll get rougher. All right, I'm gonna start going two-handed here, put the camera away, talk to you in a bit. Hey, what do you think of this? I'll turn the camera around so I'm not obstructing the view in a second. I just wanted to share this with you from where I'm at. All right, so I did change my location where I was planning on going. Uh, give me a second here. There we go. Reason being is uh, uh, I know the trail. It's not something I go on often. I just thought it'd make a nice unique location. But I started down and nobody had broken the trail there, which was nice. I mean, to be the first one in this dump of snow to have gone down that trail. But it kept getting trickier and trickier and I was doing more and more bouldering. So I walked back up, took a side trail that I know better. Now, mind you, it still involved bouldering, like getting to this high point. I still had to do a bit of climbing up over some boulders. But uh, I think I'll find a, an easier spot to sit down, hopefully. And oh, go from there, you can tell. Now, I'm not in great shape, but I'm not in bad shape. But this is giving me a workout for sure. I'll talk, again, I'm gonna talk about the camera, but hopefully it's giving you a better view uh, than the cell phone did. All right, I'm gonna turn the camera around so that you can see what's going on. And uh, my spot that I wanted to get to is not too far away. So the area we're looking at is known as Susie Lake, Quarry Lake within the Blue Mountain Birch Cove Lakes Wilderness. And I say Susie Lake, Quarry Lake, because over in that corner of the lake, the two lakes are connected by a small uh, body of water, almost just a channel, deep, but just a channel the same. So it's essentially the same body of water, but uh, 
they named them differently. I think they were both separated at one time until a dam was built at the far end of the quarry lake. And that's the reason why it rose to the level where the two of them connected. The reason it's called Quarry Lake, for those of you who are not familiar, is over in that direction there is a huge quarry on private land that actually abuts up against the wilderness and they wanted the uh, water for, I don't know, cleaning out trailings, whatever they were doing, but it caused, they dammed it and that caused uh, a backup in water which kind of filled the lakes up a little taller. So when I was out here last, uh, I said the ice was likely not safe. Now look down there, it still doesn't look all that safe. It looks, well, there's snow on top of it, but the way it looks now, that's because it, it, the snow landed in water. So I still don't trust myself to go out there on the ice because uh, what happens is it may be below zero, but the snow is insulating it. So whatever it is underneath, that's where it kind of remains. It doesn't get any colder because of the snow. Had the snow all washed off due to a rain, then the temperatures dropped, then we really would have had some good thick ice, but that's not the case today. All right, I think that's enough of here. Let's go set up and I'm gonna start with a cup of tea and I'll explain, but I'll start with a cup of tea and we'll move from there. All right, this is the site that I wanted to get to. And I guess I should have anticipated how much snow is here. I mean, it's not too bad, but uh, I brought a shovel. I'll, <laughs> I'll talk about it and show it to you in a minute, but I did bring a shovel just to clear myself a little working space here. I guess what I didn't anticipate is, and I'll show you this in a minute, the pine branches, huge pine tree right here, big pine tree, white pine, uh, all weighed down with snow. So the branches are actually coming down and touching the ground all around me here. And I'm not sure I want to knock the snow off them because once I do, I'm going to get covered and don't want my camera gear to get covered in snow. Oh, okay, but I think it's nice here. It's peaceful. It's quiet. Okay, let's get the hammock chair set up on these poles I left here the last time I was here. I'm not sure if I'll show you everything as I go along. I might actually record this and then speed it up just so it doesn't take too long to set everything up. Yeah, I think that's what I'm going to do. So next few minutes, everything's going to be a little faster forward uh, than reality. All right, yes, I did say a cup of tea. Let me explain in just one moment. I think it's, let's see. No, it's still a little hot yet, uh, but it won't take long. Okay, so I'll let you in on the little bit of behind the scenes things when I come out into the wood. I guess maybe I should start, full disclosure. I did come out to the woods today to test out some gear not to make review videos. Uh, I just wanted to come out and enjoy the snow before the rain that is predicted comes and makes a, a big mess of it out here. So that's my primary reason. But I said, I'll just throw a few things in my bag. I've got to test them out. I've got to review them at some, or I want to review them at some point anyway. So I'll be doing that, uh, but not as part of this video. That'll be something altogether se uh, separate. If I end up reviewing them today, um, no. No, I don't think, maybe one, <laughs> but the others won't be reviewed today. Uh, at least you'll know that they have been out and I've been testing them. One or two may appear in the video, but I'm not gonna talk about them. That's for future videos. So a little bit behind the scenes, what happens when I come out for any given day in the woods, 
that would be a uh, video recording or review in the woods kind of a day. It starts out with me hiking into the woods, just like you saw. It takes me, okay, where I'm at right now took me about 45 minutes. It's usually about 30 minutes, but it was, I don't want to say brutal. It was just slower because of the snow, especially going up and down over rocks and, and climbs like that. So I just wanted to be sure I didn't fall. So yeah, I'm getting a little older, maybe a little bit more brittle, not quite as spry. So I took my time to get in. I'm here. Now, this spot is one of three spots that I use uh, for making videos. This one is not so far into the woods. It's not an hour and a half like I usually go. But it provides me a place that I can come in and be by myself and record videos. That's the, the idea. My usual way of doing things is I start by coming in, setting up a site like you see I've done right here today. So, um, while I was off camera, I made my cup of tea. You're going to see what I made it with in a few minutes time because I have a lunch I want to share with you. And then I sit back with my cup of tea to kind of collect my thoughts and warm up a little bit if, if I'm chilling off. And I make notes. Something I can highly recommend is everybody have some type of a notebook with them when they go into the woods. If no other reason than to journal what you have done, uh, what you've seen, what you would like to do. It gives me opportunities to think about things that I want to do in the future. There's something about being out in the woods that allows you to clear your mind a little bit, get rid of the pressures and day-to-day -day stuff that you have to take care of at home, but out here you can't take care of them because you're not there. And I can record things down. So this, I was very fortunate, is a Christmas gift from my wife. This is the Right in the Rain setup. I'll show it to you. It's not a review. It's just what I take. Now, prior to having this, I took dollar store notebooks and they work fine. I had to put a little, I had a vinyl slip cover type of thing that I'd put it in to keep it from getting wet. And uh, you know, I still actually, no, I didn't bring it out today. I had no reason to, but I still use those and they work just fine. The only issue can be if it's really cold out and you're using a pen with ink in it, Sometimes though, that will freeze depending on how cold it is. Yes, you can keep it next to your body and warm it up and all that type of thing. And that's, you know, a good trick. Or you can bring a pencil um, or a mechanical pencil. Or you can buy a right in the rain kind of pen. So this is what my wife got me. That's a little nylon cover. It holds notebooks by right in the rain. And a right in the rain tactical pen, I guess it is. And they're pressurized ink cartridges that allow me to uh, write on wet paper. This paper is also designed for writing on when it's wet. Uh, it's not cheap, so if you don't want to buy the notebook, uh, but you still want a pen, buy the pen, buy the you know regular notebooks. They won't be waterproof paper like this is, or water resistant paper is probably a better way of saying it. But when you're asked, what would you like for Christmas? And you put something like that on the list and buy it, you use it, and I love it. It's perfect for what I'm doing out here. So this is just part of the process. And part of, you know, I'll put down things like, what am I going to do today? And then I can look back and say, what did I get done? Sometimes it's nowhere near as much. Huge snowfall just off a tree. I, w I never would have caught it in time, but a, a whole tree, like all the snow just slid down and fell into the, onto the floor below. It caught my attention. That's why I was diverted there for a minute. Okay. Um, so here's what I want to share with you before I get into doing my other things as I have my cup of tea. And uh, like I said, I'll have lunch in a few moments time from your perspective. It might be a little while but from my perspective is the camera that I'm using. So the first two videos that you've watched that I've been calling hiking a coffee were recorded on my cell phone, my aging cell phone. It, it is due for replacement, but uh, it's, it's hard for me to justify that, to have to spend a lot of money, even a reconditioned, unlocked cell phone, or get it on tab and have pay for it monthly. Uh, a half-decent cell phone is still going to run you a lot of money, and it's hard to justify when this one still works as a cell phone. What it doesn't do so good at, anymore is as for taking videos. Now, it's okay as a picture camera for recording, you know, clips here and there, but for videos, especially out here in the woods, it's very limited. So the question is, is why am I not using my good camera? And I think I've mentioned this before. It's a Canon M50. And uh, it, I use the Rode Wireless Go 2 mic microphone system. So there is the microphone here and the receiver sitting on top of the camera. I have it on a tripod that I bought for $6 at the uh, thrift store. 
I have never felt any need to upgrade it. And I have a Joby Gorilla Pods around here somewhere when I want to attach it to a tree and that type of thing. Um, this is a great camera and it cost me a good amount of money. It was a worthwhile investment for anybody who's considering doing YouTube videos to look into these cameras, Canon M50, and there are some newer versions. It was the preferred camera for people doing YouTube videos when I bought it. There are newer ones to look at. Here's the issue. It's anything but waterproof. It's an expensive, it's called a mirrorless camera, uh, interchangeable lenses and that type of things. Uh, I love how it operates, but it is not something I like even where I'm at right now, I'm a little nervous. It's these branches I mentioned are full of snow. If the snow starts sliding off of these branches and hits the camera, then uh, I'd hate to see my investment get damaged and, you know, if it's even repairable. So what's my point? Where am I getting to with this? Uh, I'm looking to replace, not replace this camera, because this is still will be my primary camera for coming out in the woods when the weather allows for it. Uh, it's also heavy by comparison to a cell phone. But what I want to do is purchase an action camera, uh, a GoPro or something similar. GoPro is co commonly what they referred to because I think they were the first on the market. And still considered one of the best. DJI, Insta360, these are all higher-end brand names. Acaso is considered a good budget camera. But I've been doing my research into action cameras and... Uh, what I have found is, I think the one I'm going to buy, and you're welcome to chime in and tell me if you think I'm crazy or if it's a good choice or if I need it or don't need it, is the Hero, or the GoPro Hero 10. And I think there's a 12 now, so you, each time they go up. What I understand is, as they add the next model up, the older models tend to go down a little bit in price because they're not quite so state-of-the-art. But when I did my research on this one, it looks like it has everything I needed to have. They all take great video. That's, I mean, some take better than others, and some you really have to be uh, a real professional to see the differences in. But what a lot of the value action cameras don't have is good sound. And that's equally important for recording videos like this, is good sound. And the ability to plug in an external microphone like this one. So that's where I'm headed. Um, it's just gonna cost me. It's gonna cost me a fair amount of money. Uh, it'll equal at least one of my royalty checks that YouTube sends me for making videos. So uh, it's an investment. You know, I'll earn it back, I guess. Uh, I just want to put out there that hopefully in the future, videos done like this will be of better quality. And I won't have to worry about risking them getting wet in, in the rain or the snow and that type of thing. And they're lighter. I'll still use this one for the better, when I need the, the better quality pictures and video that this one will take. But for the most part, it, actually, I think it's going to cost every bit as much as this camera did in the first place. Whew, that was a rant, wasn't it? My tea has got to be ready now. Oh, spot on perfect. And I know someone's going to ask, well, what are you drinking for tea, Mark? It depends. I, I'm referred to as what is a switch drinker. At least that's what they, they call us here in Nova Scotia. Uh, there are those who love their tea and there's those that love their coffee, but there's not a lot of people that drink both coffee and tea. So for me, I drink both. It's usually first thing in the morning, big cup of coffee, maybe two. Just sit around, let it take effect, enjoy the flavor. And it's usually Rampage coffee, as people know, that's my, my go-to. Uh, then later in the morning or early in the afternoon, I'll have a cup of tea. Uh, sometimes in the afternoon, I'll have a cup of coffee. I will be having coffee this afternoon and, and with my lunch. So, you know, that's it's hiking a coffee. I've got to have a coffee. Well, you don't, but I am having it today. So what am I drinking? Well, right now it is Earl Grey, hot, black. Mind you of anybody? Um, I like it. I like Earl Grey. Uh, I drink green tea. I drink uh, chai tea. I drink them all without milk just to enjoy the flavors. Of course, it doesn't mean they're hot. Yeah, so when I'm drinking tea, that's what I'll do. I used to do loose leaf tea. I'll do that once in a while. Loose leaf tea, I'll just buy some good green tea somewhere, that uh, good quality green tea. But uh, yeah, that's what I'm drinking right now. Stash is the brand, Earl Grey, hot black. Okay, uh, I've got a few chores I'm going to be doing around here for the next little bit. 
and then I'm going to come back and make some lunch because I have a special lunch that I think you will appreciate. It's with something you might normally serve at, at breakfast time, but it's good any time of the day, and it's easy and hi hyper nutritious, best way to put it. Really good for you. Okay, I'll bring you back in a little while. Okay, it's been about probably an hour since I last had the camera on for this video and uh, playing with some knives. All right, so having fun. Still out here having fun, playing with knives. Uh, that, that'll show up at some point later. Um, but now it's lunchtime. Actually, what time is it? Okay, it's two o'clock. It's past lunchtime. So now it's time to eat. Now, if past lunchtime, well past breakfast time, but I'm going to have breakfast right now. And I want to share this with you because it's something I made up for myself. I have water heating down here, which is almost ready. Okay, so I got to hurry up and talk about this part. This is note meal not oatmeal, all right, note meal. And basically what it is, it's, re it's an oatmeal replacement, but it doesn't have any oats in it at all. It is something that you can have an, on a ketogenic diet like I have or any low carb diet. Um, there's no sugar in this, but it is a worthy replacement. I'm gonna call it somewhere between uh, oatmeal or porridge and muesli, hot muesli. That's the best way to describe it because there is a great number of things in this. You know what, I gotta get it, the water into this, but I'll show it to you in the bag and in a minute I'll come back and while it's rehydrating, I'll talk about the ingredients. Oh yeah, my water is hot. Where's my spoon? There's my spoon. Uh, this is a GSI Fair Share mug. I actually found it at Value Village. I was quite pleased with that because they're a nice mug. They're very lightweight. They have an insulated sleeve on the outside. And they're great for rehydrated meals. So there is the mixture. Again, I'll describe everything that's in it in a sec. Ooh, the flames are coming a little closer. And I'm gonna need my glove. You can see how hard the water's boiling. All right. That's all it needs right there. Give it a stir. I actually may have put more water in than was necessary, but if I leave it sit, it's probably going to rehydrate it just nicely. Oh yeah, I can see it's starting to thicken up already. Now, to give it some time, put the lid on. Any other day of the year, I would say this would be enough to keep it hot. But, lunch bag, dollar store lunch bag. And I put this down inside, and that just that gives a little bit of extra insulation. It only takes about five minutes or so. So uh, while that is rehydrating, then I will. Uh, I might as well give you the in, the ingredients. All right. While lunch is rehydrating, um, I'll give you the ingredients for this. And everything I'm telling you now will be in the video description below. I just wanted to give you an idea of uh, what it is that's in that meal, that lunch that I'm having breakfast, whatever you want to call it right now. Start with, I am not condemning oatmeal. If you like your oatmeal, continue eating your oatmeal. Uh, there are two things about oatmeal that uh, is the reason I'm, I'm no longer eating it, especially if you buy the instant oatmeal, the ones in the little packages. Tastes great. I'm not arguing that. But one, they are full of sugar. Two, they have instant oats. Instant oats are highly processed. So, uh, you know, you think you're getting a great healthy oatmeal because of the oats in those instant breakfasts. You're not. They're highly processed. So they're, they're almost like eating white bread compared to a full, a full grain bread. That's the best comparison. Don't take that to the bank. That's just this one I could come up with off the top of my head. So where does that leave somebody on a ketogenic diet? Make your own. So no oats, not even um, full oats that you want because they can still be very hard. You know what, full oats, what am I talking about? The, uh, the steel cut oats, the, the long ones you have to simmer for a long period of time, I don't even eat those because as good as they taste and they're not unhealthy, it's just they're higher in carbohydrates than I want on my ketogenic diet. So let me just give you what I have and uh, you know, you may tune this out and stay for the coffee, but, you know, I'm going to suggest you at least take a look at this. You can put it together very easily. All the things that I'm giving you now, I picked up at the bulk burn. So, um, the amounts I'll put in the video description. But flaxseed meal is one, chia seed, hemp hearts, unsweetened coconut shreds, almond slices, almond flour, 
monk fruit sweetener and you can substitute in stevia or whatever sweetener, allulose if that's what you have. I'd love to have it. We don't get it in Canada. Pumpkin seeds, sunflower seeds, chopped pecans. Those are the what I call the foundational. And then I go on to experiment. So what else do I have in this one that's rehydrating? Cacao nibs. Cacao is the unprocessed cocoa. So when a, a cocoa bean is uh, fermented and dried and ground, it's ground into not before it's ground into a powder and before it's processed, they, it's like it looks like ground coffee is kind of what it looks like. And they're called cacao. That's the unprocessed form of cocoa. So cacao nibs. But I also added in collagen powder, whey protein powder, MCT oil powder, and a little bit of psyllium husk. Those are just extras. I call them optional. They add to it. They're, they're healthy. They, you know, they give, make, give it more nutrition. But the other things that you add is a little bit of sea salt, or any salt really, uh, cinnamon, nutmegs, cloves, and ginger. And those are what that combined with the sweetener is ma what makes it uh, reminiscent of an oatmeal. Now, don't get me wrong. This is not oatmeal. That's why they call it note meal, not oatmeal. It has a bit of a different texture, but it still has a lot of the same mouthfeel. In fact, I think I'd prefer this regardless if I was on the ketogenic diet. Not just for all the health benefits of all the ingredients, but it actually, it tastes great. It really does. It has great texture. It tastes great. What more can you ask for? I would say that's probably rehydrated. I'll check it, and if it is, then uh, I'll give you a taste test, and then we'll move on to coffee. So, uh, one of two things. I could have let it rehydrate just a little bit longer. I don't think that actually would have helped much. Or I could have put a little bit less water in. I probably should have measured, right? Uh, it's an experiential thing, and I would suggest that if you make it, start with the least amount of water. And you can always add a little bit more, or just try it the way it is. All right, I'm going to spoon some up. Now, having said that, is, I mean, it's still... Plenty thick, right? It's still plenty thick, as you can see. Does that, can that showing up on camera? I'm hoping. And it's plenty hot, too. Wow. I mean, seriously, you have to try this. Okay, you don't have to be on the ketogenic diet to try this. You don't have to be on a keto to enjoy this. In fact, I would say anybody who tries this and experiments with it will appreciate it. Your body will love you for the extra fiber and all the extra nutrition in it. Uh, your doctor's going to love it for the lack of sugar or the sugar that's missing. I mean, if you really have to have the sugar, put it in. But I don't miss the sugar because that monk fruit sweetener that I have in there replaces that just nicely. The amount of spices that I put in there make it so reminiscent of a nice uh, cinnamon oatmeal flavor. Nothing wrong with this. Mm. Mm. What happens between the flaxseed meal and the almond flour, it gives it that thickness, that porridge kind of a gelatinous consistency. And everything else was carried along in there. That time I got some of the cacao nibs and then gave it a bit of a chocolate flavor on top of everything else, which is great. Okay. I got to stop recording so I can start eating. And then we'll come back and make some coffee. All right, coffee time. Uh, so this is something I've owned for a while. And I did a review on it, but it's not a product that was sent to me. It was something that I was actually a Christmas gift from years ago. It's called the GSI Coffee Rocket. Kind of a unique little device. It's a type of pour over drip device. Oh, get it more comfortable here. And uh, what I like about it is how it fits all together inside the GSI Infinity Mug, which by the way, fits inside that GSI Fair Share Mug, the larger one that I had my breakfast in or lunch in or whatever you want to call it. So it makes for a compact, lightweight setup. Nice insulated mug. Oh yes, also picked up at a thrift store. So the whole concept here is you fold the wings out and that's going to sit on top. Stainless steel filters inside. You have to kind of experiment to see what is the best uh, grind size for this to work. And you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to take it off when I pour the coffee in so I don't, if I spill any, 
It won't go into the mug. A little bit more. About two tablespoons this time. It's not as forgiving in terms of the amount that you're going to put in it. Like you can't fill up as much as you want. There is a limited capacity to it. This is the hopper. The hopper holds the water, duh, but has four little holes right in the bottom down here and then an air relief hole on top. So when you pour the water into the hopper, it starts dripping water into the coffee, into the mug. And my water is hot again. Doesn't take long. And I'm going to need a glove. And unlike a pour over, you really don't have to wait. You can just kind of fill it up. So I guess in this way, it's more like a drip, which is a pour over. I know it's kind of semantics, what's what. Okay. Now what I can do to make sure it doesn't cool off too much, is just kind of sit this on top like that. I can see it pouring through slowly, great, but it is gonna take a minute or two to pour through. And once it's done, we'll have a little bit more of a chat before we close the video out. So it occurred to me early on in the video that I said I would share with you this little snow shovel that I brought along. And uh, well, as good as time as any to do it, right? My coffee is just about steeped through and we'll uh, enjoy that in a moment. You see what I paid for that? Hopefully that's going to show up. $4.99 at uh, Value Village, which is our local thrift store here in Canada. And what a nice little shovel this is. It collapses at two different lengths. So well, actually that's pretty much it, but you can collapse it down, push button on it. I'm not sure if this was intended for putting in the back of a car. I mean, it makes a great little emergency shovel for the car, but I'm going to, I'm going to guess around 10 ounces. That's what I'm going to guess on it. But I bring it out occasionally. Oh, the brand sub zero snow and ice tools. I don't think this is a professional mountain climbing one or anything like that. Uh, it's pretty well made though. Maybe it is, but 499, I can strap this on the outside of my backpack. So when I get to a site like I was today, the snow, probably wasn't really deep enough to justify it but it was nice to be able to have that snow to to or have this to clear the snow away very quickly yeah if you can buy one at an inexpensive price they're a handy little thing to have and you never know when you're really going to want one okay now it's coffee time all right coffee is done hot and steamy oh and spot on perfect i'm going to put the lid on just to Keep it from getting cold. The Infinity Mug has that nice little flip over seal on it for drinking from like a sippy lid. Okay, there's something to be said for that little coffee rocket from GSI. What I like about it, you don't get a large cup of coffee, but you get just the right proportions. I mean, that's one of the experiential things when you're learning to make coffee is getting the amount of coffee to the amount of water correct. Well, this is kind of done for you. You can only get so much coffee in that little uh, filter basket at the bottom, and you can only get so much water in the top portion of the hopper. So when you fill those up and you let it run through, you get the perfect uh, ratio of coffee to water, and it works out really, really well. This is nice. Of course, you gotta have good coffee, and of course, I'm still using the Rampage. What time is it? 3.30 in the afternoon. I'm finally getting around to having coffee. Completely overcast. Kind of threatening to snow. Which would be nice. That'd be great. Except for this camera. I don't want it to get wet. It's starting to chill off. This is the finest kind of day. You know, if you... Look out the window and you go, oh, I don't know about that. It's wet, it's cold, it's you know, humid, or not, yeah, well, humid. It's not exactly humid, but I guess that's what it is, humidity, 92%. And you say to yourself, oh, that's not going to be a lot of fun. Then you miss an opportunity to get out and really enjoy yourself. It's not a matter of pushing yourself to extremes to get out there in all kinds of weather and prove that you can do it. It's just a matter of 
there is absolute enjoyment. And both the snow where I'm at, where I ended up, is pristine, except for I walked on it. There, no one else has been here. And that's a bit of a joy to be able to get into an area where no one else has been and just sit down and look. The crows have been doing their thing around. Uh, actually, it's the only wildlife I can hear is the crows. Although on the way in, I did spot coyote tracks, which was kind of interesting. Uh, I knew they were here. I've seen them in years past. I hadn't seen them recently. We had reports of people seeing them. But when you get snow, you see them. That's when you know. And deer and rabbits. So hence the coyotes would have something to sustain themselves with, I guess. I got to do this more often. I really do. Okay, I think I'll, I'll close it out here before the video gets too long. It was just supposed to be about me coming out and enjoying myself in the snow and having a cup of coffee and, and sharing that lunch with you. Boy, I'm telling you, we have Bulk Barn in Canada, which is a... I, I hesitate to call it the health food store because it has a wide range of things, but it's all sold out of bins in bulk so you can weigh out the amount, exact amount you want. But it does have a wide range of things. So everything I talked about in that list, and it will be in the video description, you can get at Bulk Barn. Um, a lot of it you can probably get at your local grocery store, most of it, especially if you go into the health food section. I'm sure you'll get most of what I talked about. It's just a great meal, you know, it's, you, you can have it for breakfast, but you can have it for lunch, you can have it for any time. And if you have other things planned, you can always have a bag of that in the bottom of your food bag that when you're out longer or you're hungrier or someone else joins you and you didn't bring food for them, you've got something that you can share between the two of you. That's the way I look at it anyway. Uh, let me know what you think about my purchasing the GoPro Hero 10. That's the one, GoPro Hero 10. It's around $350 Canadian. I don't think it comes with a lot of accessories at that point, so then I'll be looking for accessories. I did look on Facebook Marketplace, and to be honest, uh, the GoPro Hero 10s that I saw there were almost the same price, so I might as well get one new with warranty and, uh, and be, you know, feel safe about buying it. Uh, if you think there's something better or equally as good for less money, I'll, I'll quick look at it before I make my mind up. Okay, that's all I have for you today. Do what I did. Get out and explore. Take that path less travel because it will make all the difference. Bye for now.